So it is August the 13th, so Friday the 13th. Um, it's pretty late in the afternoon. It's like 3.30. Um, I didn't actually do anything yesterday. Like I'm officially on leave. Thank God. Because work on Wednesday was a nightmare. Um, but I haven't really been doing too much for the last couple of days. I've just been relaxing because it's been exhausting at work. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. So, I have done a little bit of knitting. Not too much, but a little bit. And sorry if you can hear that motorbike. It sounds like there's a motorbike in my driveway. Uh, but I've been working on this little duck. Now, I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, <laughs> um, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, so it's a little duckling. I got the pattern off of a Ravelry. It only cost me about four or five dollars. It was fairly inexpensive pattern, but it was super cute and I wanted to knit it. Now, I've never knit anything like this before, so this is the very first time that I'm actually doing this. Um, but I'm actually fairly impressed with how it's coming out so far. Um, uh, the only thing I think I might change next time I make one of these is a slightly thicker yarn. I have used fingering weight, which I used uh, this yarn here. It's just called Speckled Duckling. This is from um, Jokamamo Textiles. So it is a sock weight yarn, basically. The pattern does call for a sport weight, but I wanted to use this yarn. <laughs> um, and I probably could use this yarn if I maybe go down a needle size. I was using my Prim 3mm ergonomic needles, like the circulars, so if I went down a size, I think I could, it would be better. It's just that um, across a, some of the short row sections, the stitches do pull a little bit so they're a little bit like the holes are a little bit bigger um but i think apart from that it's turned out pretty good i have stuffed him i haven't snipped off the ed the, the ends yet but i've sewed in like squished in the eye section so i can sew in the eyes his little tail and he is supposed to be a little bit of a wonky shape it is supposed to look like this because he's supposed to sit up with like this and then he'll have his little beak here his two little wings and then his little feet down here. Um, so this is what I'm up to so far. I have knitted the wings. Um, these are the wings, but they are curling in on themselves. So I think what I wanted to do, um, they are completely finished, but they're like one-sided. And I think what I want to do is actually, um, if I can these together um, is actually like sew them together so they're a little bit more sort of thicker and stable and won't curl in on themselves so they'll be kind of like that and then sew that wing to the duck so that's what I'm going to do so I'm just onto the wings at the moment and then I'll be onto the beak and the little feet but it is so so adorable I'm um, enjoying knitting this. I've never knit a stuffed animal before. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. I think it's adorable. Um, I am learning things. There's definitely things about this that um, isn't exactly the best, but I'm learning. I'm learning. So that's the main thing, right? Uh, but I really like how it's come out. I, I think it's pretty cute so far. Um, so that's what I've been working on. Um, I have been binge watching a few shows. Um, I started watching Nancy Drew on the new Paramount streaming service that just came out like a day or two ago. And it's great. It has some moments in there though that scare the bejeebas out of me. <laughs> Especially because I tend to watch it at night time. Um, and it's definitely more of, it's not a children's Nancy Drew, this is definitely a lot more adult, this one. Um, but it's been really, really good. I've been loving that. And I got new books, you guys. I'm really excited. I'll show you. <laughs> so I finally got my hands on the book that I've been wanting for a while. 
and it's uh, House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, which is this one. Uh, I believe this is supposed to be like a horror or something thereof, like close to it. Um, I wanted to get this book from Kmart because at Kmart these are only $12, whereas every other place that sells this sells it for $20 to $25. And I'm not going to pay $20 to $25 when Kmart sold it for $12. But Kmart was constantly out of stock. And then we went into lockdown. And <laughs> so it was a whole thing. But I finally got my hands on it. I have it. I'm excited. I haven't started this yet, but I am going to start that this weekend. And can we talk about how beautiful the cover of this book is? Like, oh my god, this book is gorgeous. Ugh, I love that. And then when I was there, I had only intended to pick up this book. That's all I was going in there for. But then when I got there, I found this book. And this is... It's not a new um, like story, but it's a new edition of the story. Uh, so this is uh, Debbie May Comer is the author, and it's called Susanna's Garden. This is a Blossom Street novel. Uh, I believe this is the third book in the series, and I am collecting all of Debbie May Comer's books, so I don't care if I don't have like the first or book or whatever. I just grab them when I see them, so I can just add them to my collection. The story which is um, called Susanna's Garden, was originally published in 2006. There is also a bonus story included in this, which is called What Amanda Wants, which was uh, published in 2005. Now, this is obviously clearly not a new, new story, but it's a new bind-up edition of these two stories. Um, and it's funny because I saw this actually on Debbie Maycomb's Instagram because I do follow her on Instagram and I saw that she had posted the picture of this exact book and I didn't think it'd be in Australia just yet because I know Australia does take longer to get things sometimes but it was in Kmart for $12 so I grabbed it and this is the Mills and Boone edition of this book so super excited so I picked up these two books cost me $24 Essentially, it's three books because there's two books in this one, um, but $24, so yay, I'm excited, you guys, so excited. Um, I ordered some Halloween yarn yesterday from Jogamamo, uh, one of my favorite yarn stores here in Australia. I love uh, the yarn from that store, it's beautiful. I was really, really hoping, though, that they would have new, like, colorways this year but unfortunately the colorways are exactly the same as last year's Halloween yarn which was a little bit disappointing um, but I did still buy some though I still spent like a hundred dollars <laughs> might I add um, but uh, so what I did was uh, last year I didn't actually buy all of the colorways I only bought some of them um, so this year I bought I bought two of the colorways that I didn't purchase last year. I repurchased, uh, I think it was Jack-O-Lantern, which I did purchase last year, but I used the Jack-O-Lantern for a project um, last year, and this year I want to use the same colorway for a different project. So I got those three um, colorways. I think the other one was... It was Halloween self-striping one. I think it might have been called Halloween Treat. I can't remember. And then the other one was Halloween Speckle because it was a speckle. And then I got two of the Halloween minis, which I already have all of the Halloween minis, but I've already earmarked those minis for a different project and I wanted to get two more for socks that I want to do. So I did buy those yesterday um super excited but i will leave the link for their store as well down below because you may not have seen these halloween yarns before she also has i think it's three is either two or three different halloween project bags um i didn't buy any this time but she has a ton of project bags on her side anyway um but she does have some halloween ones on there which was uh super cute so that's what I did yesterday and today is, yeah, I did go to uh, my local Arboretum, which if you don't know what an Arboretum is, it's basically parkland. Um, it's one of the oldest parklands in our area. 
it's beautiful it's um i want to say it's heritage listed as well because it is a uh wildlife sanctuary like it has tons of wildlife living there um, and we went there today and i love going there because it's obviously it's a public park and it has all of these walking tracks and everything in there and it has waterways and stuff you can walk out on like on these little mini like jetty to like that goes over the water um, so you can look at the ducks and fish and all that sort of stuff. Um, I wasn't like super happy though because there was these mums and I don't have anything against mums but I do have an issue with the self-entitled mums that think because they are mums that we owe them something and that they're entitled to anything they want. No, I don't give a shit if you pushed out a kid. That's not my problem. I don't owe you shit. <laughs> Um, like, and unfortunately there was these two mums that were at the park that were very much these self-entitled mums and they had one kid each, but it's like they had bought their entire frigging house to the goddamn park, excuse my language, and what they had done was there is a walkway, and it's a narrow walkway, and then it leads onto a small little jetty that overhangs like the big pond area where all the ducks are. And it's all public access, right? But what they had done was, is they had set up so that they had blocked off the jetty so no one else could get there. And they had like a million and one blankets laid out all over the ground. They had bought like their kids' entire assortment of toys and their prams and all that crap with them. And they had completely blocked off like the area so that no one could use um, that area except them. And it's just like... There is a giant, giant park. You could have literally sat anywhere, but instead you're going to be a rude bitch and block off public access walkways. Like, and then, um, this is another one of my pet peeves, is at this Arboretum, it has signs up everywhere saying, do not feed the wildlife, right? And that those signs are up there for a very particular reason because human food is not made for the consumption of like you know for animals to consume it's it's not made for that not only that but human food generally has preservatives and things in them that are not good for animals and right where they were sitting they were sitting right next to the giant big sign that literally said do not feed the ducks bread and also do not feed them period and what were they doing feeding them bread. It drives me nuts when people do that. I know most people don't know this and so if you don't know I get it like you know but when there are signs up and they're big signs so it's not like you can't miss them um, you're just being ignorant and rude and the reason why you can't feed ducks bread is because it's actually incredibly bad for them. It has no nutrients for them. Also bread swells when it gets wet and it's also filled with preservatives that ducks are not supposed to be eating and if you get the bread in their waterways it dirties up their habitats that they swim in and it can be just really bad and toxic for them but they're feeding them bread right next to the sign that says don't friggin feed them bread I was just like these women are excuse my language but effing stupid um, and it's just like, and not only that, their two children would have been just old enough to walk on their own, right? They were quite small. I don't know what age that is. I don't have kids. But I know that they were quite small and they were kind of wobbly walking. Now these two mums are just sitting there on the ground paying zero attention to these two babies. And these babies walked out onto the frigging jetty that hangs over the water. And while the jetty does have railings up, the railings are wood at the top and then it's got the posts, but in between the posts there's no railings, it's those cable wires and a child can easily squeeze through those cable wires. And the mums are paying like zero attention to their babies. Clearly their babies are more of an accessory to them than an actual child that they need to care for. And I was just like oh my god these women ah uh, like and unfortunately i do live in an area where there are a lot of women like that and like i hate 
being like rude or like bringing down women because I don't believe any woman should bring down another woman but I do think that people need to be put in their place when they act like they are better than everyone or more entitled than everyone I don't care whether it's a woman or a man or you know a friggin alien if you act like a rude dick you're going to be treated like a rude dick basically and in my neighborhood there's a lot of those types of people unfortunately it's majority women in my area that are like that oh, don't get me wrong there is definitely a few men like that but it's those like those mums and not all mums are like that don't get me wrong they're not there are plenty of lovely mums in my area as well but there are always just a lot of those really like up themselves I'm better than everyone because I have a child um those types of mums and it's just infuriating that like they just assume that they can do whatever the hell they want and everyone else is just gonna abide by what they want it's like no bitch I'm not I don't care. I didn't choose to have kids. You did. Your kids don't affect my life. You being a mum doesn't affect me. I also don't care that you popped out a kid. That is not the world's biggest achievement. And I'm not saying it's not an achievement because it absolutely is. There are definitely women out there that may not be able to have children or can't have children, myself being included, but it's also only important to you it's not important to anybody else like for me I would like to have children one day but I also do not expect a single person around me to give two F's about me having a child or my child because it's not their choice it's my choice and my choices should not affect anybody else and that's what I think society lacks is that like we have this mentality of well I had kids so therefore I'm important no fortunately you're not because you're just as important as the next person and the next person may not have kids and that person is just in, um, just as important as you are even though they don't have kids because having kids is not the be-all and end-all of life I'm just saying it frustrates me that people out there act that way but anyway enough of my ranting I've got plenty of time. I am going to go back to the Arboretum. I just think I might not do it on a Friday because these mums seem to be there every freaking Friday and it's the two, these two women, the, and I know them. I mean, I don't know them personally, but I recognize them every single freaking time and they're always in everybody's way. And like, if you're trying to walk along a footpath or something, because the parklands can get quite muddy because of it's all... Kind of like hilly and stuff and water runs through there it's connected to the Brisbane river there's big ponds if it rains like you know so you can't walk on the grass everywhere in that area and so if they're blocking off the footpath and you're trying to get through they give you like this filthy look like how dare you like be near me in my presence like mm. so i think i might have to just not go to the arboretum on fridays which kind of sucks because when I'm normally working, Fridays are my days off, and you know, I want to be able to do what I want to do. Um, but, mm, it is what it is, you guys. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of really all I've been doing. Um, I have actually, I have been binge watching, and I highly recommend it. There is a YouTube channel called Bailey Sarian, she is amazing. Uh, she does a uh, true crime podcast so if you like true crime podcasts I highly recommend Bailey Sarian's channel it is so fascinating and then she's just recently started doing something called dark history podcast which she does um, she releases those on YouTube I think it's every Thursday or every other Thursday and they are so good so so good and like so her true crime ones are obviously about murders and stuff like that and then her dark history um, podcasts are about literally that things that have happened in history that are quite dark that have been covered up that it like you know just things like that um,